Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll take a look at the newest version of the Wasteland gameplay map and growth system. This is where beginners can earn Zenny, EXP, Equipment, Time Quicksand, and Permanent Attributes which are important for the early game progress of your character. In addition, I will also be doing a giveaway in this video wherein you have a chance to win the limited Rainbow Light Spirit Pet. All you need to do is watch the video and look out for hidden redemption codes. Once you've found a code, log into the game, tap the other tab, tap settings, and then type the redemption code in this portion. These codes can be claimed only once so you need to act fast. Good luck! Alright, without further ado, let's begin. The Wasteland region is divided into five field maps, with each map containing various monsters and activities. First is the main Wasteland map where most of the gameplay activities are located. It features different monsters such as Normal, Elite, Mini, MVP, and World Boss. Second is Windbreath, which you can enter via the West Portal from Wasteland. This map contains normal monsters only, so it's a good place for early game farming. Third is Moonlight Grotto, which you can enter via the South Portal from Wasteland. It's also a good farming map since there's only one elite monster that can spawn here. Fourth is Maple Leaf Faramita, which can be accessed when your progress in the Divine Spirit Tree reaches level 16. The map is a mirror of Wasteland and it also features various normal, elite, mini, and world boss monsters. Fifth and last is Frost Domain, which you can enter via the Northeast Portal from Maple Leaf Faramita. These last two maps feature the Chaos Aura mechanic which converts monsters into aggressive Chaos monsters. There are tons of activities that you can do in these maps and we'll take a look at these activities one by one. First, we have Farming Normal Monsters which is one of the core aspects in progressing your character throughout the game. Every day you're given 300 minutes of combat time which you can spend by auto-battling normal monsters. Defeating normal monsters will grant EXP, Zenny, cards, and crafting materials. It's recommended to farm in wasteland maps when just starting out since the monsters here are pretty easy to one-hit kill and they drop materials which are needed for early game progression. You can obtain wasteland materials like ancient remains and maple colored agate which are used for upgrading the divine spirit tree and for crafting wasteland gears. You can also get Uya materials like dry sand, earth elemental crystal, and fantasy flower which are tradable in exchange. These materials can be used for producing wasteland ember which is needed for socketing, repairing, and safe refining wasteland gears. Next, aside from farming, another way of spending your combat time is to clear the new wasteland rifts instead. Each run consumes 60 minutes of combat time and you can gain EXP, Zenny, crafting materials, and the wasteland gears. We already talked about the new rifts and wasteland newbie gears in one of my previous videos. If you haven't watched that yet, I have the video linked down below. Basically, this new rift system is a good alternative for players who are busy in real life as there's an instant clear function which can be unlocked once you've cleared the rift's highest difficulty in solo mode. You will need the wasteland gears to get stronger and be able to clear more difficult instances until you're able to switch to ancient equipment. Next, we have the Divine Spirit Tree Growth System which can be unlocked after finishing the first chapter of the Wasteland Story Quest. In this system, you need to unlock the nodes to obtain various items needed for character upgrades and Wasteland exclusive attribute bonuses. In order to unlock a node, you need to spend a certain amount of Wasteland materials. There's a total of 32 nodes which can be unlocked after collecting Ancient Remains and Maple Colored Agate. Plus, your tree's progress will depend on the rate of accumulation of Wasteland materials from farming monsters and clearing rifts. As a tip, if you want to upgrade your Divine Spirit Tree more quickly and have extra Zenny, you may purchase a Time Observer box from the Event Merchant NPC which grants 1,000 Ancient Remains and 6 Maple Colored Agate. Unlocking nodes will also increase the level progress of the Divine Spirit Tree by 1, and each level up will either grant rewards or unlock a chapter of the Wasteland Story Quest. You will need to reach level 16 and complete the reversing time chapter of the main story to access all 32 nodes. 
The level rewards include gold medal and contribution for upgrading the Acer Monument, belief tokens for upgrading the guild players, and personal permanent attributes which also take effect outside of Wasteland. You can check all your Wasteland buffs and personal permanent attributes in the fourth tab of the interface. Compared to the previous version, the Wasteland buffs are now lower, which I think is okay since Wasteland normal monsters are also weaker. Another change is the removal of the EXP bonus node, which I think will discourage high-level players from staying in Wasteland for EXP farming. Once you've upgraded the Divine Spirit tree to max level, you may use your excess Wasteland materials on the different Wasteland buildings found in the third tab of the interface. An example is a Magic Treasure building where you can exchange Wasteland materials for unique items such as the Lucky Bag for getting a random amount of Zenny and the Quandary Power Potion for increasing your base and job EXP. Some craftable items from the previous version like Hawkeye, Dream Chopping Blade, and Blueprints are already removed. Next, aside from getting attribute bonuses, another benefit of upgrading the Divine Spirit Tree is the production of Time Quicksand. You can now directly claim Time Quicksand from the Divine Spirit Tree after completing a T4 class transfer quest. Initially, the Divine Spirit Tree produces 3,000 Time Quicksand per day with a storage cap of 10,000. But once you unlock these nodes, the production speed will increase to 7,000 time quicksand per day and the storage cap will increase to 19,000. This is definitely better than the previous version wherein you can only get 4,000 time quicksand per day after completing 4 adventure quests. Next, speaking of adventure quests, you can still complete the Wasteland adventure quests in this new version which are marked in the quest tab with blue icon. You can get 6 adventure quests daily and each quest will grant Ancient Remains, Wasteland Home Reputation, and EXP. After completing 4 adventure quests daily, you will get the Maple Colored Agate. Next, another activity you can do daily in Wasteland is the hunting of elite monsters which are marked in the minimap with a purple asterisk symbol. There are now only 23 elite monsters compared to the previous version which had 40 elites. You can find them easily via the monster secret tab in the Divine Spirit interface. Their location, spawn timer, and even the method of summoning and killing each elite monster are all indicated in detail now which is really helpful for new players. As an example, you need to change the weather to sandstorm via the Ice Dragon Divine column to summon the Ruined Stone monster. If the spawn timer of your target elite is still on cooldown, you can just switch to another channel to check if it's still alive since killing elite monsters is not affected by channel switch penalty. If you still can't find it alive in other channels, then another option is to use a time backtracking device located here. You may donate waste and materials to activate this building and it can revive the elite monsters in the map. Killing each elite monster the first time will grant 500 time quicksand. Thus, defeating all 23 elite monsters the first time will give you a total of 11,500 time quicksand. After that, killing them again will no longer grant any time quicksand. However, you can still hunt elite monsters every day to get the infernal mobs chest. Opening it grants 30 to 60 ancient remains, 0 to 1 maple colored agate, and 20,000 zenny. You can get a maximum of 5 chests per day, and its drop rate is not affected by combat fatigue. Next, we have the Chaos Aura gameplay mechanic in Maple Leaf, Faramita, and Frosty Main. Defeating normal monsters in these two maps will drop Air of Chaos, which you can find in this tab. Collecting a certain amount of Air of Chaos will convert normal monsters into aggressive Chaos mobs. The higher the Air of Chaos you have, the more Chaos mobs will appear. We'll only start seeing the 4 Nightmare Elite Monsters once you have at least 8,000 Air of Chaos and the maximum storage cap is 15,000. The advantage of seeing Chaos Mobs is that they drop Crystal of Chaos which can be exchanged for various crafting materials. Air of Chaos can also be converted into permanent attributes via the Frost Statue building in Frost Domain. Here is a list of stats you'll obtain and the corresponding amount of Air of Chaos you need to donate. Once you've reached level 10, you'll be able to exchange 1,000 Air of Chaos into 50,000 Zenny. It is recommended that you maintain at least 9,000 Air of Chaos to still be able to see lots of Chaos mobs and farm Crystal of Chaos efficiently. 
Next, you can also play mini games via talking to Tristan in Wasteland. There are three types of mini games, and the goal is to get to at least level 7 of each mini game as it will grant 1,500 time quicksand. There are 10 stages for each mini game, and clearing each day the first time grants the following rewards. Next, you can complete various side quests which are marked with a green icon. Some of these quests are activated by using the Lost Pointer or Dust Compass item which are randomly dropped from killing monsters. There are also other quests which can only be completed after unlocking a node in the Divine Tree Spirit. An example is a Forest Robber quest wherein you need to submit the Wild Blade from this node to finish the quest. Completing the side quest in Maple Leaf Faramita is also good as it will unlock the Wind Tide White Deer Mount. Next, you can also hunt for treasures which are scattered randomly in wasteland maps except for Wind Breath. There are large treasure chests which you can only claim once, and there are also small treasure chests which respawn at random locations every 12 hours at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. server time. Lastly, you can participate in killing the world boss. The Dragon Skeleton in Wasteland and Incantation Samurai in Maple Leaf Faramita have high HP pool and an HP shield, so it's better if more players participate in killing them. All players will get Luyang materials as participation reward after the world boss has been defeated. You'll also get a chest the first time you kill a world boss per week which grants 5,000 time quicksand, 50,000 zenny, a random MVP purple material, and various crafting materials. In addition, there is also a chance that it will drop a special item that will grant wasteland materials for the whole server. You can claim the server rewards from the NPC every week. So that's it for the revamped gameplay and growth system of Wasteland. I hope this video was helpful in explaining how to do the different wasteland activities. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting your subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.